indeed well. Chris Melling, Yannick Bofis, and it's Yannick breaking off. He had the advantage, well, I don't know if it is, well, it is an advantage, but he did play earlier today, and he, he beat, I think it was Mark Fleming, 7-5. Earlier, well, Chris hasn't had the inconvenience, let's say, of playing an earlier match, but... Well, we talk about this a lot. I mean, I talked about it on earlier, earlier on with uh, St. Thompson on commentary as we see a, an awful break. I hope we, we get some bigger breaks than that in this match. I'm sure we will. <laughs> Look at Chris's reaction. Um, but, but obviously, yes, it is a disadvantage to, uh, to have to play the extra match. But the benefit is if you win that match, you go in against the seed with a match under your belt. You've got your arm going. You've got a feel for the tables. And, and that's where Yannick will be. Absolutely. Yannick could be very pleased with that opening shot there. He's clattered the ball in and left himself with a great chance now to open accounts. So what looked like a bit of a scruffy frame after, as you said, Simon, a, not the greatest break in the world. He's now going to get a good opportunity to take the lead. Recently donned the glasses, did Yannick? So I think it was the last event back in September when he played for the very first time with them. Very accomplished player, Yannick. We've had several battles with Chris over the years. But when I was playing for Ireland, Chris and Yannick were both internationals. We're also the England and France, respectively. They're a little bit younger than me, of course. I mean, a lot younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that they were juniors. Well, just a simple stuff really to do now for the surgeon. I think you want to get onto the yellow at the top of the table first. And the yellow over the middle will be his last one before the black. <coughs> Just bridging over this yellow, but it shouldn't be a problem for Yannick. But yes, it's not been the greatest of weeks so far for Chris Melling. No, just the one match and it didn't go his way, but he's it's what you always get with these Pro Series weekends. You get the, the second tournament. They are worth the same, the same same prize money, same ranking points, same prestige. It's it's a, a big deal in its own right. It's gonna be Yannick. Relax a little bit with that. As Mr. Melling now breaks us off in frame two. Oh, watch out, if Chris breaks like that in this match or in this tournament, he's going to be a big danger. He's a big danger anyway, of course, but that was flushed. Because he, he's been playing around with this sort of top spin break, which never, it, it doesn't always look that good, but he's very happy with the results it has been. But that was much more like the, the flush it straight back down the middle kind of break, which looks good. Yeah, don't get Chris started on the breaks. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing, actually. Obviously, Chris will be the first to tell you that I had a conversation with earlier on this weekend talking about this, actually, and saying about how he's... I've been amazed at how consistent he's been with Ultimate Paul. He's a player that, at his best, wins major tournaments, but not always the most consistent of players. And that's some, one of the things he will, he'll tell you from you know his years gone by, but he's been the most consistent player with Ultimate Paul. He really has. He's the only player to have won every season with Ultimate Paul. He's now won four titles, he's been in eight finals, 17 quarterfinals and beyond he's been in. It's quite amazing. That's some record. Yeah. When he's playing well, he, he sort of glides around the table, Chris. So it, it, there's a nice fluid movement to him and it all looks very effortless. He's got, he's got a very long pullback on his cue action. Almost as if his arm's stretching out of the arena before he strikes the ball. Yeah, and it, it can 
make him struggle a little bit when he wants to play delicate sort of hold shots and stun shots. He, he's mentioned that before. It's a, stopping the ball dead on these tables is actually really hard for Chris Melling. Yannick Bofis with his very precise break and the way he dresses the shot. So just get everything exact. That's better. Oh no. That was so much better than its first break. <laughs> it's, it, it's just such a strange game, isn't it? The first break, he completely miss hit and made a break clearance. Second break, he flushes. Look at this cue ball right back down the middle of the table. It's going to park in the middle. And that's, that's as tough as it gets. The unfriendly red that came up the table and bumped it into that corner bag. And well, look at these yellows, Simon. I think this frame will be passing us by very quickly. Yellow balls in play. You mentioned the sort of ages. What, what you're a what are you a decade or so older than Chris, give or take? Um, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, I'm so on 55. The, the, yeah, so that he may be just over the just over that. But I think Chris is in what 42, 43 now. And I, what, the reason I reference that is that you've obviously you're at the top of the game when he was coming through. How early did it, did it, did people know Chris Melling was going to be what he is? Um, pretty pretty quick, I'll tell you. He appeared. There's a very young player, and people said, oh, he's a big potter. Funny enough, he came along right at the same time as Mick Hill. Well, he was a, a pro on the snooker scene for a while. He's been, obviously, played an awful lot of nine ball. He's playing a lot of Chinese eight ball. He actually had a good run recently in China. He's, he is all over the place. He's, <laughs> he's probably the most travelled pool player we have right now. Absolutely. We, well, I had him in comms a couple of days ago, and he, he, I made the mistake of asking how he's... What, what's he been up to for the last couple of months now? And, and the, the level of travelling, you know, backwards and forwards from Asia, just incredible. You know, he said he's only been at home something like twice in six months. Yeah. It's it, incredible, isn't it? It really is. And he's got another layout here that he's just going to absolutely fly through. Well, Yannick can put his feet up for a bit. Because there's no way Melly's going to miss these, and it's going to be rather rapid once again. Well, we've had four frames now. We've not seen eight minutes gone from the, sh the match clock. He wants the same quality, but just a little bit more fortunate. Yeah, that was just bad luck. Like you say, Simon, Yannick's break, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but a very unfriendly red charged up the table and banged it into that top corner, which gives Melling an easy finish. Well, he kept the cue ball in play this time, but it's going to be dry. We'll have another look. Didn't have the same explosion with the balls that his previous break did, that he went in off from. This one is keeps it white on the table, right? In a nice spot, but no friends. Yeah, it's not going to work out well, breaking like that Extension against call. Chris Melling. Melling's starting to look in the mood. Yeah, has a, a slight problem here in the bottom right, but Chris is so creative in the way he, he'll deal with these sorts of layouts. He has so many ways of doing it. I, I've spent time filming with him, and he's so clever, so creative, and he sees everything so quickly. It really is amazing when you sort of get to hear his thought process. Yeah, he's certainly got a large box of tricks. And he has every shot in the locker as well to go with it. But you have to have a great imagination to, to see this, these sort of shots where, you know, even I can 
looking at and I've got a vivid imagination but some of the things he, he sees it you know are incredible you know three ball cannons and yeah. to nudge a ball out and, and, and he plays them to perfection I love commentating with him because he'll say something like oh he's in trouble now and you're looking at him is he and then two shots later you're oh yeah of course so he's, he just yeah. sees he knows he sees those patterns he sees where they've missed a trick it, it's amazing he's, it really is he sees the game as well as anybody ever ever has well he can see into the future if you like as well <laughs> yeah. what, what, what is amazing about him so he's trying to play off the two reds and then the third red knock in with a cue ball that's exactly what he's trying to do I mean clever little shot didn't go in but he's uh, he's got second prize there yeah that was creative in the end he actually didn't quite managed to work out plan A there and ended up coming round to that one not quite dropping in but he still has some equity in the frame these two yellows are very difficult in the bottom corner by the cue ball now of course a tough pot up the table Yannick playing the loss of turn there the cue ball's gone in unfortunately for there for Yannick Hands. Time he's playing this, he's, he's playing the yellow there to knock Chris's red in. And unfortunately for him, the cue ball was a very unfriendly one as Chris now removes his second to last red. And everything just seeming to slip away from Yannick Bofis after that perfect start. slip away quickly <laughs> it's amazing five frames of oh, we are 11 minutes just over I mean man I mean he must be absolutely fuming to go out early doors of a tournament because it's just not him and I think he's, he's he's turned up for this game thinking I'm not having that again not not today Come up dry off that break though, and so Yannick now getting his first taste of the table really to have to have a decent go at it since frame one. Yeah, that now's the time, but this isn't exactly a a brilliant opportunity. He does need a, a breakout shot. Well I'm sure he's just trying to leave himself an angle on that red there to go into that cluster and he's come back too far. And this is the thing, I know he won the first frame, but he's still cold, really. You know, when you've been sat there and watched the next four go by, it's almost as if you've got to reset and start all over again. And of course, when you're playing this sort of match and you know what's sat the other side waiting to come to the table should you miss, it can be quite daunting. Yannick now just trying to find a way where he can get an angle and go into this cluster. He can't just keep potting the loose reds. He's going to have to find one very shortly. I think we're going to see him try now. Thin cut into the middle. You see he's digging down on the cue ball. Well, he went into them, but it's not come out. It was a little bit... I thought it was a little bit soft he played that. Not as much conviction as either liked. attempt there and you see him miss the red but what he's also done is open up the two yellows for Chris Melling not a gimme finish but one that you fancy won't pose an awful problem for Chris Melling might get excited about trying to work it out like the challenge He's already got his plan, Simon, hasn't he? Yeah. Took him about 
15 seconds to work out your route. Perfect. Yeah, played that one nicely. I actually thought he might go forwards on the previous shot and take the one he's playing now, possibly down the table or centre if it was on, and leave the one at the top to get to this one. But you can't argue with the way Chris has gone about these, although that's not the best shot he's ever played. Down very quickly for this. Not bothered about it. Look at that. Wow, that's the perfect cue ball. Get it up in the air so it's out the way of the ball's coming <laughs> up the table and then stop in the middle. Yeah, you saw Chris clapping this one. This may be the best break I've seen all weekend long. This was amazing. And parks itself. <laughs> it's very eye-catching, isn't it? That's yeah. brilliant to watch. Yannick quickly onto the Reds. <coughs> you kind of feel that the reward is there for such a good break. And Yannick will deserve this frame because of that break. And he doesn't half need it now as well, to be fair. Yeah, this, it's been one of those matches. He, you'll feel like he hasn't really been involved in it, but... He has had a couple of chances and a couple of half chances that maybe he could have done more with. And he's going to be playing the plant now down the table. I want to be in an ideal world, you think, on the plant, the ball he's planting as well. He will put the cue ball in a position where he can be on the top one if he has to. No, you're right, Sam. He wants to take both these reds now down here. Last red at the top of the table because it's easy to get from red to black and finish off this frame. about seven frames inside 17 minutes Simon that's a fair old pace and you've got to factor in the fact that many would regard Yannick as one of the slower players on the tour he won a couple of the frames assuming he puts these two away control that nicely and this two win his first frame since the very f opening f frame of this match. I wonder if he can bounce the cue ball like Yannick did. Well, are we seeing a little bit of a turning of the tide here? Chance for two frames on the trot for Yannick. Not quite as powerful as previous breaks, but it still felt like he squared it up enough to deserve a ball, but not to be. Yannick opting for the Reds. Red played that firm, and he played it deliberately so he could push that yellow out of the way of the eight ball to free up the bottom left hand corner. That's very good early thinking there from Bofis. You kind of feel when he played that shot, he's already plotted his route as well. As he negotiates this next red. Just nick this frame, Yannick. Yeah, 
all of a sudden Chris Melling, you can, you know, he'll be in his, well, in his sights. It, and it's also, it's, and, and Chris does think about it this way. It's about whose break it is. So in, in Chris's head, this is, this is one of his. He, he's not worried about the last one. He's not worried about the fact that Yannick broke cleared. He, that's his his frame to win. This is a this is a Chris Melling frame. So this is one against the head if he can take these out. And and then Yannick has the the break again. It's one of the ways that Chris deals with, you know, being left a really challenging finish off his opponent's break. It, it's almost a, in his mind, a free hit to to try and steal one away. Almost like a break of serve. Yeah, absolutely. thought it was Chris Melling that was disappearing over the horizon and now this is a great chance for Yannick to keep Chris firmly in his sights at 5-1 it felt like could, could Chris set a record for the fastest ever 7 uh, getting to 7 victory as in 7-1 victory he was absolutely flying and it barely used up 10 minutes of the match clock at that point frame from Yannick Beaufils. Many of which you will see across our three TV tables. Disappointed week for Ronan McCarthy, Simon. Yes, it, it is. And it's obviously with what he achieved last year at the World Championships, the World Masters and everything else. He can, I think, if he never wins another tournament the rest of his career, he, he can retire happy because, oh, Yannick what he's achieved has been been amazing but still a little bit of a surprise to see him have another disappointing weekend absolutely so we'll have another look at this bouncing cue ball two bouncers and into the middle pocket that's not what Yannick wanted we saw one earlier but uh, I forget who was playing that it was a smash break and the cue ball leapt off, off the table just went straight into the middle pocket <laughs> I think it might have been last night actually incredible Well, Yannick's had one in off that was very unfortunate, that one not so much, but he has handed an opportunity here to Chris Melling, one that he looks like he fancies, he well should as well, these yellows look very, very good, and he has the next break, so could be the final visit to the table, that one for Yannick. That's not where Chris Melling wanted to be. He's in trouble now. He yeah, didn't want that kiss. I think all he's got is a, got a long cut up into the top left hand corner. But then you never know with Chris. He might spot something that nobody else has thought of. But I think it is this long ball. Is he going to cut it into the centre? That's quite a thin cut. Oh, that's very clever, but it's not going to work. Where did he dream that up from? <laughs> it's actually amazing shot he's attempted to play. Yeah, he played, deliberately played the plant with Yannick's red, but to send a cue in to try, just try and kick that yellow into the middle bag, and if it got it had gone in, look where the yellows were, he was he was up. Yeah, and he wanted the, the red to go in top right as well, but he really wanted to, to flush the red so that the yellow wasn't flying around the table, so he was keeping control of everything. Everything was perfect there, other than the yellow dropping in. But just to play that plant <laughs> in the first place from where it was, I mean, it's length of the table. It's not as if it's over the back. Yeah. It went in clean as a whistle as well. Not, I don't think... Uh, I'm going to say, I, I don't think another player on the tour plays that shot. No. I mean, it's an audacious attempt, isn't it? <laughs> it really, it really is. is. Yeah. 
Well, he's been allowed back to the table immediately here as Yannick has missed there. That's a big, big, big miss. It's one thing not getting a chance at the table, but when you get the chance and don't take it, it's uh, bad things will happen. Chris doesn't want a second yellow to drop in. He was, <laughs> he was looking a little bit worried there, isn't it? It trundled up the rail. He thought, oh, no, don't go in. But he's in premium position now for this frame. Chris just wanting the cue ball cleaned. What's he seen? A speck of dust on there or something? Putting our referee under pressure because it is cleaned on Chris's time and <laughs> he had used his extension. So, yeah, of course. Yeah. Just had to be careful there. But there was still plenty of time. Well, this is formality stuff for Melin, and this will put him one away from victory. It's very impressive the way he sees the game. That was a fairly routine, simple chance, though, but he still puts it away with a minimum of fuss. Looked like he threw a little bit more into that one. He did. Didn't keep his normal shape. No, he meant that one, Simon. Yeah. Still didn't quite square up that front ball like we know he can, but, I mean, look at this layout. I mean... <laughs> He's not even getting down on the shot. He's so happy with this layout. Well, he's making quick work of this. And this is going to be the match. In goes the black ball and Chris Mellin defeats Yannick Bofis.